Okay, with my Cops and Robbers project, I'm first and foremost a rapper, an actor, a writer. Uh, my background was in entertainment, mm -hmm. and I decided to go into law enforcement, and now I incorporate all of them. So Cops and Robbers is a solo play, a one-man play. Uh, it centers on an officer-involved shooting, and I look at it from multiple perspectives. I play about 19 characters in the play. And the, the, the play is intended to bring people together from all different walks of life, all different ideologies and belief systems, and to sit them down in the same area and discuss what they believe mm -hmm. and what they hold to be true and examine those truths around an officer-involved shooting. So I've performed the play at uh, universities uh, all over the country. I've performed the play in the jail, uh, in Santa Rita Jail. Uh, I performed the play at a number of different places and it's done just that. I was able to get kids from Juvenile Hall in there. My unit was instrumental in getting kids from Juvenile Hall in there. Uh, chiefs of police from the surrounding agencies, uh, therapists, teachers, students, and we get them all in there and, and then we do the play. The play is about 90 minutes and then we usually break up into a discussion. Well, Cops and Robbers has impacted my police work greatly because when I first did it, I, I didn't know what was going to happen. Uh, law enforcement is a, is a conservative uh, institution and cops and robbers is everything but conservative. Like I, it's, it's about an officer involved shooting mm -hmm. and there's, uh, I hold no punches in it. Uh, I, I go in every direction, mm -hmm. full steam. So when I did it, I didn't know what would happen, but I just felt the need to do it. I was walking in and out of all these different worlds. I have a degree in black studies. I have this political world that I'm a part of. I'm, like I said, I was an artist. I toured the world with my band. I have the artistic world. And I grew up in Oakland during the crack epidemic. I have, you know, the community world. And, 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 and now I'm a police officer. I'm a deputy sheriff. So there are all these different worlds that live just in themselves and not speaking to one another. So I, I had to write the play. I had to perform the play. So performing the play, taking that leap and not knowing what was going to happen and then getting the feedback from it, I feel like it just made me want to be, it made me want to be better, which is, which is ironic because when I did the play in the jails, that was the number one feedback from the, the guys in the jail. They said the play makes me want to be better. When, when, I, when my entire unit came out to see the play, when I performed it at the Marsh Theater in San Francisco, that was their feedback. Yeah. They said it makes me want to be better. And it's a hardcore play. You know, it's tiring. Uh, there's a lot of negativity in it, but I felt like I needed a, a, a soul cleanse yeah. at the time because I was being bombarded by perspectives and just all different types of negativity and things that the average human being doesn't want to see. Uh, in my unit, the, the unit that I'm in, the Youth and Family Services Bureau Crime Prevention Unit in the Alameda County Sheriff's Office, uh, our guys, we've grown from three to 22. And we're very proud of the unit. The, the work that we're doing in the community, the uh, creative placemaking work uh, around community building, uh, trying to uh, spur local entrepreneurship, uh, building a safety net to catch the guys that are getting released from jail. Uh, we, we have a program called Operation My Hometown, which we build a safety net with multiple organizations and agencies, uh, the district attorney's office, public defender's office, housing, uh, the religious sector, community-based organizations, the therapists. We also have over 20 therapists in our unit. And we, we, we locate guys that are going to be released that want to take part in the program. We assign them a clinical case manager so we could build a program around them. And then when they're released, this is months before they're released, by the way, then when they're released, we catch them. So uh, that's part of my program. We, we, wanna, we know that there is a lack of uh, economic opportunity in the area. So we, especially with people that are just getting out of jail, you know, so we, we, uh, we uh, created a, a, a nonprofit called the Deputy Sheriff's Activities League that can move a lot faster than the Sheriff's Office can. Mm -hmm. And uh, through that nonprofit, we bought farmland. And, and we have guys, we pay guys to farm it, you know, a livable wage, 15 to 20 mm -hmm. an hour to farm the land. And they produce produce, it, it gets sold around the Bay Area. Uh, we just purchased a warehouse where it's gonna be a, a kitchen where we have local food entrepreneurs come and they'll be able to prepare their food. We're just trying to, uh, trying to build some, breathe some economic development into the community. So creative placemaking, I look at it as a way to get the community to believe in itself through action you know, uh, getting the community to, to remake uh, their own community as they see fit in a way that will benefit them and empower them. Mm -hmm. So I, I, it, it has to happen. It has to spread across the country because we can't continue in the way that we've 
that we've been going. Yeah. You know, the entire country is on fire right now. There's a huge movement in the country right now, and it's not going to go away unless we make some structural changes. And creative placemaking is the doorway to making those structural changes.